Giving.org does is we run campaigns. Actually, campaigns that would make a lot of sense at avenues. These are things that don't require money, an adult, or a car, but that have an impact on an issue. So for example, um, we'll do something like, we'll want to do a canned food drive for food pantries. So we'll call the food pantries and say, do you really need soup? Because everybody collects soup for you. And they'll say, no more soup. No, please don't give us any soup. What they need, does anybody know what they need? Non-perishable protein. They really need non-perishable protein, which really means, you probably can guess what that is. Non-perishable protein, my guess is, peanut behind butter. you. Peanut butter. Would you, would you have said peanut butter? I'm looking at the kid behind you. Peanut butter, right? Okay, so are you crunchy or smooth? Which do you prefer? You don't like any peanut butter. Ah, okay. So we run a campaign uh, called PB and Jam Slam, and the whole thing is, are you team crunchy or are you team smooth? Um, so who's smooth? OK, so you're right. And um, basically, 2 thirds of American kids are team smooth. And uh, so we run this campaign. And the span of about a month, we will collect, or we did collect, 200,000 jars of peanut butter. So these are big scale campaigns. We basically filled the nation's food pantries with peanut butter. So we'll do a campaign like that. Or um, we'll do a campaign, um, I'll think of another good campaign to share with you. Uh, here's another good one for avenues. Uh, we'll do a campaign around youth homelessness. So again, we'll call the homeless shelters and say, what do you need? So what do you think? If you were a 17-year-old boy, let's say, and you were homeless, and you got to a shelter, what would be the first thing you would ask for? Clean clothes. Actually, people rarely guess it. It's blue jeans. It's jeans. People usually say shower or food or a cell phone. It's jeans. Because you can wear the same pair of jeans every day and change your shirt, and nobody knows. Actually, the jeans are better a few days in anyway. And um, you can wear them all four seasons. If you're not sure where you're going to be sleeping, jeans are actually pretty great. So we, OK, we got this. And so we run a campaign called Teens for Jeans. And we will collect, again, in a one month period, about a million pairs of jeans, which the homeless shelters use to lure kids off the streets. Hey, you want a pair of jeans? You've got to sleep in our shelter tonight, which is really key because um, homeless youth, uh, when they don't sleep in shelters, um, they end up sleeping in awful places. I won't go any further than that. But they end up sleeping in awful places, and awful things happen to them. We'll leave it at that. Um, uh, so the shelters use it to lure kids off the streets. Moms are happy because kids are cleaning out their closets. And young people have learned a ton about youth homelessness and the issue. So anyway, campaigns like Teens for Jeans, PB and Jam Slam, over a six-month period, members probably heard about these campaigns multiple times, maybe 20 emails. So these kids on my team had scraped mobile numbers for these 500 people and sent them a text message. And while I was sitting on this conference call, they had a 20% response rate in nine minutes. Is anybody here in marketing? Like, that should blow you away, right? Like, you're hoping for maybe a 10% or like off an email, a 3% open rate would be huge. This is a 20% response rate in nine minutes. You open every text message you get. There is no text spam. No one is texting you about Viagra. No one is texting you about like, oh, my wallet was stolen. Please send me 5,000. I'll send you back 10,000. Remember those emails? That was because no one was making money on email. And the mobile carriers are making money on text. So right now, Verizon and Sprint have both told us that they are blocking 80% of the text messages being sent to you. They're just blocking them because they're incentivized to keep spam from coming to you. So for our members that do something, they text their family, they text their friends, and they text do something. So they trust us. We have this great relationship. So um, that day, 20% response rate in nine minutes, a new strategy was born, and we pivoted to text, and we now text all of our members. So we're texting a few million people a week. Again, huge open rates, about 97% open rate. Again, the marketers are drooling a little bit right now. 97% open rate. Excuse Hispanic and urban, which is great because do something as a not-for-profit. We know that a lot of Avenues kids are going to do social change and that like Ashley in Beverly Hills is going to go to Costa Rica on spring break and build a house. But we want to make sure that like every kid has access to making the world a better place. So um, sorry, some of you probably have kids named Ashley. So, um, so uh, we pivoted to text and it's been fantastic. 
huge. We have 3.6 million members now. It's the largest youth organization in America. We should be 5 million members by the end of this year. So it's, it's really growing like crazy. And it's growing around the world. We actually have 100 members in Iran right now, which I think is hilarious as a Jew. So, um, so that's all great. There's been this one weird side effect of doing all this texting. You hadn't been warned that I was funny. You just thought I was like causey. I'm actually funny. So um, the only weird sort of unintended consequence of all this texting with all these young people who trust us and love us is that we've been getting messages back from them having nothing to do with peanut butter or hunger or homelessness and genes, but things like I'm being bullied and I don't want to go to school tomorrow or cutting, um, lots of messages about cutting. Um, and we were triaging them. We were sending back like, here's the hotline number or here's the website. And that was fine until we had a particular text message. This is a little gruesome. Um, that said, he won't stop raping me. It's my dad. He told me not to tell anyone. Are you there? And we were shocked this was happening to, to anyone, that this was happening to this girl. We were shocked that she would share something so intimate and so horrific with us who were really, we felt strangers and not experts. And so we sent her the uh, phone number for Rain, the rape and incest organization, and we didn't hear back. And the next day I came into work and said, send it to her again, and we sent it to her again. And we've actually never heard back from her. I have no idea what happened to her. And um, every couple of months we look for her mobile number in our list and we haven't heard from her. And it sort of wasn't enough. Like it wasn't enough to just be triaging and sending hotline numbers. Clearly young people wanted to be able to communicate by text. This is the number one way they communicate and so we set out to build something for her. So we launched it. Uh, it took about two years to build. It's a whole other story. We launched it in Chicago and El Paso. We pulled 4,000 mobile numbers from our do something list in Chicago and 4,000 mobile numbers from our do something list in El Paso and we wanted to see how different it was. So we launched in those two markets and again when you text out you have to opt in. So we texted out from do something and it said something like, hey there's this new service, if you or a friend needs it, here's the number. So you couldn't reply to it, you had to re-opt in, which already means lower rates. And in four months, we were in every area code in America. So that's like the kind of virality, that's like faster, frankly, than Facebook grew in their first four months. It's like incredibly fast virality, um, which on one hand is amazing that this took off. On the other hand, it's really, really sad because it means young people needed this that badly. This is with zero marketing. They just told each other about it and spread the word. It's pretty incredible. We also saw three times the usage adjusted per capita in El Paso as Chicago. Um, and the kinds of issues we saw, I mean, I thought it was all going to be about bullying, right? We see this in the news all the time. We hear about this from our kids coming home from school. I thought it was all going to be about bullying. 30% about suicide and depression. Um, so 11% of the messages that we get every day are pretty serious suicidal ideation. It's serious stuff. It's pretty bad out there. Um, it's been less than two years, and we're now handling 16,000 messages a day. We've done more than six million messages total, and that's with zero marketing. It's crazy. 